Complexity meets automation. Welcome to Currency Cast Expert Edition with a focus on the meat industry. My name is Austin McKinley. I'm the financial writer at Cantox and your host. Today we have a special guest, Ben Santos, currency management specialist at Cantox. We're going to discuss the ins and outs of currency management in the meat industry and how currency management automation can help CFOs and treasurers deal with the challenges of currency management in these times of predictable unpredictability. Ben, could you start by describing what your role is at Cantox? Of course. So yeah, thanks, Mac. Thanks for having me on your podcast. So my role at Cantox is to work with different companies across the meat industry, producers, wholesalers, traders, processors, retailers, to help them identify the different currency risks that they're facing and the challenges that come with managing those risks, to then offer them one single software solution to deal with all of those risks and challenges to make their lives easier. At Cantox, we're writing a report on currency management in the meat industry. And we've arrived at the following idea. It is a simple yet complex undertaking. Simple because most firms face dynamic prices. And all there is to do is to implement a micro hedging program for firm commitments. That is to say, to hedge those incoming firm sales and purchase orders. Yet it's a complex undertaking as well. And that's because of the sheer number of transactions involved and the variety of settlement and delivery procedures. Ben, would you agree that this is a fair assessment of the situation? Yes, totally. I think there's a lot of complexity within, within the industry. Many companies do face dynamic pricing. However, there are other companies that face uh, longer term pricing agreements. So they may have fixed prices with supermarkets, retailers that they supply to. They face different types of risk. I think the two key risks that we see within, within the industry are the pricing risk and then the transaction risk. Transaction risk being from the moment that a deal is agreed to when the customer would actually pay the client or when they would, they would actually pay their supplier. So there's the transaction risk there. This could be a month, it could be two months, three months. Depends on the, the company. And what about pricing risk, Ben? What, how would you define it? How to deal with that? So pricing risk is the risk that you offer a price to your clients, say today, but then they don't actually decide about the deal until next week. Right. Obviously, in, that, in the interim, the market could move in your favor or against you. So the price that you actually agree with your client um, could be way out of line with the, where, the F, where the exchange rates are at that moment in time. So that's the pricing risk, is that the business is not updating their their price in line with the FX rate um, frequently enough. All right. Well, given that complexity that you just described, I take it that there must be a lot of manually executed tasks that must be uh, carried out by members of the finance team. Is that right? Exactly that. As you say, there's many manual processes from the moment that a company is actually pricing in a foreign currency. Where do they get that exchange rate from? Are they going on to Bloomberg? They, they then manually keying that into their system. So this is the rate that they're going to be using in their prices. Um, so where does that come from? How do they update that? Typically, a lot of manual processes there. Then once there's actually exposure being generated, so a purchase order, a sales order, how are they collecting that from their system? How are they processing that? How are they then deciding what they need to hedge? So typically many manual processes here. Then on the execution side, how are they doing that? Are they calling up their banks to get the best rate? Are they going onto an online platform again to get the best rate? So how do they actually execute? And then after that, we have hedge accounting, swaps, reporting, many manual processes here as well. All right, if I understand you correctly, so these administrative tasks and it's manually executed tasks are, are present throughout the FX workflow, throughout the three phases, right? The pre-trade phase, the trade phase itself, and the post-trade phase, is that right? Exactly that, yeah. And obviously these take a lot of time. There's a cost element as well. Uh, spreadsheet risk, typically we see huge spreadsheets trying to calculate currency risk. Um, so there's many manual processes that we can help to automate. Um, the more manual processes, the more risk. Obviously, manual processes mean delays, and this can create currency risk as well. So let us take stock of what we've learned so far in our conversations with Ben Santos on currency management uh, in the meat industry. The way I see it, companies face four main challenges. One, they need to improve pricing. Two, they quite obviously need to remove currency risk. Three, they would need to improve traceability. Four, well, they need to find ways to ease that uh, administrative burden. 
Ben, is there a way companies can handle these challenges simultaneously? Yes, of course. So that's why we're here today. Currency management automation can help solve all of these challenges for clients with one single piece of software. All right, let's start with pricing. Pricing is such an important issue uh, given the well, relatively thin profit margins in the mid industry. How can currency management automation solutions improve pricing? So one of the ways that it can help is by providing real-time rates into our client system to enable them to, with their commercial team to be using an accurate FX rate when they're determining their prices. This can be sent uh, via API connection. It can either be the spot rate or it could be the forward rate to ensure that the rates that they're using are, are as I say, as accurate as possible. We take a data-driven approach so that the rate would be updated based on any significant change in the market. So instead of the rate going in, say, 8 a.m. every morning, it would actually be updated whenever there is that significant change. That could mean that within the same day, there could be two, three updates. However, it could also mean that for a few days that the rate that's being used in the pricing is staying the same if there's not much volatility in the market. So it's really about giving those commercial teams accurate, price, uh, accurate FX rates that they're using for their prices. Right, that would include also, I guess, a markups, right? But it's not a risk that markups could be excessive thereby hurting the competitive position of the companies. Exactly that. As you say, it's important that the markups are as low as possible, specifically in the meat industry with low profit margins. By, by sending the forward rate, uh, that, that's one of the ways that markups can be reduced and also this data-driven approach in, in terms of actually updating the, the FX rates being used in pricing um, based on what's happening in the market rather than this time-based approach that we typically see. Again, there's less of a need for markup so they can be reduced uh, right. to help with the competitive. All right, that's, that's really quite impressive, but is that system easily scalable? Yes, it can be scaled by currency pair and also by client segment. So let's tackle the issue of how to remove currency risk. The fact that many companies or most companies in the meat industry face dynamic prices means, uh, Ben, that they are going to implement a micro-hedging program for firm commitments. That's right. So a micro-hedging program for firm commitments would mean receiving purchase orders, sales orders into the technology in real time from the, the company's uh, ERP or whichever system they're using. And then the technology looks to protect that rate for them based on the hedging rules which they've decided. So it receives that exposure and then protects it for them, monitors the market. So it's actually using that data as it comes in to reduce the risk. That's of course for companies that face the dynamic prices. Um, there are also, as we mentioned before, those other companies that maybe are selling to supermarkets, fast food chains that are facing fixed pricing agreements. But to the extent that they're facing fixed prices, do they not need a different type of hedging program? Exactly that. So for those companies, what they're, what they're trying to do is protect a budget rate or even protect a worst case scenario. So typically, at the, prior to using currency management automation, they would be facing forecasting risk. Maybe they would be looking. Maybe they would be locking in a, a rate that's not favourable for them. Maybe the market moves in their favour later on, and they can't take advantage of that. They're not actually hedging based on the data as it's coming into their system. Currency management automation allows them to do that to move away from hedging based on their forecast to actually hedging on the real exposure as that's coming in, whilst guaranteeing the budget rate. So delaying hedging enabling them with risk under control to take advantage of favorable market moves. Um, but most importantly, it is protecting that budget rate because they have that fixed price. That's really important for those companies uh, with those agreements. Correct. So let's go back to those micro hedging programs for firm commitments. Now, to the extent that they aggregate exposure, does that not create a concern in terms of traceability? And why is that? relevant in the meat industry. So yeah, this does create a big concern for companies when they're, when they're aggregating exposure. And, and that concern really is about being able to identify the underlying exposure, which has then been aggregated. That could be a sales order or a purchase order. So that once they've actually placed an FX trade, they can, then just, they can still trace back the underlying source of each of the individual pieces of exposure that make up that aggregated uh, amount. Right, and why is that uh, so important to, uh, in terms of uh, currency management in the meat industry? So for in an industry where you're actually shipping around physical goods ar around the globe with the supply chain issues, shipping delays, being able to trace back an individual uh, consignment uh, that's being shipped around that maybe is being delayed is really important to then be able to take 
the correct or appropriate action to deal with that, which could be a swap, for example. So they need to be able to identify the specific purchase which has been delayed uh, and needs to be dealt with. There remains one last topic to discuss. Having removed currency risk thanks to automated hedging programs, what can firms expect? So the next issue really for firms once they have the risk under control is to take advantage of embracing foreign currencies. Embracing currencies, that's interesting. Can, how can you define it? So this is what, speaking the language of your suppliers and of your clients. So this would mean buying from your suppliers in their local currency and then selling to your clients in their local currency. There's a number of benefits of doing this. For example, with your suppliers, if you're buying in their local currency, instead of them using a markup to protect themselves from the, the currency risk, by pricing in their local currency, they will then be able to, to offer you their products or their services um, at a, a lower price in real terms because of the, the lack of currency risk for them. That's on the supply side. For you, when you're selling to your customers, your customers are likely to be able to want to, or may, may even be interested in paying slightly more to not face the currency risk in real terms by paying in their local currency. Um, so really working in local currencies is the key benefit of um, having the risk under control uh, with currency management automation. In conclusion, we have discussed a number of topics in terms of managing currency risk in the meat industry, and that includes pricing, removing currency risk, traceability, and of course, trying to remove that burden of manually executed tasks. All of that is made possible thanks to currency management automation solutions. Indeed, and on top of that really is then embracing currencies and the benefits this brings for, for companies as well. All right, Ben, thanks a lot and see you next time. Thanks for having me and yeah, see you next time.